Okay, this is lecture two in how to think and learn series. Today we're going to talk about IIT joint, joint entrance examination problems related to logarithms. So again, to recap the steps to prob problem solving, there are four main steps. The reference is this great book by George Polya, How to Solve It. Step one is understand the problem. Step two is devise a plan. Step three is carry out the plan. Step four, check your answer. In the case of prop, in the case of logarithms, uh, in order to the understanding of the problem involves us to understand the definition of the logarithm as the inverse of an exponential function. That is, if y is a to the x, this implies that log of y to the base a is x. Okay, and basically, if you plot this, so you have if you want to use different colors. So when y x, right? So when x is zero, we have y is one, and x, x uh, goes to negative infinity. Y goes to zero, and x, as x goes to infinity, the function blows up exponentially. But then, as the logarithm is the inverse function, log of y to the base a is x. All right. So in other words, if we plot y is log of x to the base a it's because we want to plot on the same axis so when x is 1 y is 0 and then as x goes to 0 y goes to negative infinity okay and then as x goes to infinity y also goes to infinity but it's the inverse function so the logarithm function grow, uh, quote unquote goes very slowly and here is the line y equals x, right? So we reflect about the line of the pass through one for y equals x, okay? So there it is. It's really, they don't meet except at infinity. Uh, that is, the y axis is an asymptote to the logarithmic function. But there are, so this is step one of understanding the problem. Uh, step two, there are very beautiful properties of logarithms. So one of uh, log of a b so if the base is not specified it's assumed e and sometimes it's abbreviated ln the natural logarithm ln of a b is ln of a plus ln of b okay ln of the product is the sum of the lons and then uh, ln or let me put log doesn't matter in general b is log the log of a over b is log of a minus log of b a common mistake committed by students and it's I don't know why they do this, but they basically write log of a plus b is not equal to log of a plus log of b. So log does not satisfy uh, linearity. Okay, it's not a linear function, so it does not satisfy superposition. To be more technical, right? A bit more technical but anyway the, these are properties that are probably known to you but there are some nice properties that I picked up from the IIT well the change of base rule is probably also known to you that is log of uh, B to the base A is log of B to the base C divided by log of A to the base C this is called the change of base rule okay Uh, so then the uh, properties two three and four are probably known to you property five uh, which I picked up log of B to the base A is 1 over log of A to the base B and it's easy to uh, verify this so here's the derivation if you will of this property moving this to the left so let log of b to the base a equals some c. This implies b is a to the c. Okay. And then I want log of a to the base b. 
So I take uh, to the base B on both sides, log of B, B, log of B to the base B, and then here I have log of A, the A power C to the base B, and I use the I mean log of B to the base B is one because B to the one is B, but then here I can use the fact that log of A power C is A times A times A C times, so basically using property two, the product is equal to the sum, but there are C log. Uh, so there are C A's, so in other words, I basically get this, okay. In other words, C is 1 over log of A to the base B. Again, this is not a proof, but a derivation, okay. Then just writing it here. So this is, let's say, 5 over here. And then the sixth property, which is very interesting, I mean, I kind of knew about this rule, right? And you can also get this from the change of uh, base rule, if you will, okay? So you can either derive it like this or apply the change of base rule. Now, this one will say log of um, x to the a, y to the b is, interestingly enough, b over a log of y to the base x. And this is... A very interesting one. This tells you that the logarithm being the inverse of the exponential function kind of slows down this y to the b to the uh, base x to the a in the sense you have a slope of b over a times log of y to the base x. And to prove this, we can use, I mean, to derive this, you can use the same uh, derivation. Let's see if we can use the change of base rule. Well, to, 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 look, I can't see how, so let's just derive this by saying let log of y to the power b to the power a equals c. This implies y power b is x to the a power c, correct? So I want log of base x on both sides. So if I do log of base x, y to the b, this is equal to log of x to the a power c. So this implies, and this is the base x, this implies that b log of y to the base x is c log of x. And then you can easily see this becomes C is B over A log of Y to the base X. So we are done, okay? So these are properties of logarithms that we will use. And then this is only, so this is part of understanding the problem, right? Uh, then step two is devise a plan. And like I keep saying in my other lectures, uh, this is what you got to be motivated, okay? You got to be mindful. You gotta practice. Oops. Carry out the plan. And then for checking our answer, we have been using Wolfram Alpha for some other problems. I may continue to use it. No, I will continue to use it, but I may not use it in this particular lecture. Okay. Then let's get started with some of these problems. Let's do a simple problem for warm-up. So this is, I mean, the first problem is log of 7, I mean, sorry, log to the base 7, log to the base 7 of square root of 7, square root of 7, square root of 7 is a 3 log of 7 to the base 2, b 3 log of 2 to the base 7, C, 1 minus 3 log of 2 to the base 7, D, 1 minus 3 log of 7 to the base 2. And the solution is to simply use the properties of the logarithm and recognize the fact that since we have base 7, it will be useful if we have 7 to some power here, and we will, as you can see. So this is 7, um, well, let me just do this. So this is 
7 square root of 7 and basically 7 times 7 to the 1 half um, becomes 7 to the 3 halves okay um, then that becomes equal to log of 7 log of 7 square root of 7 times 7 to the 3 fourths so it's a simple exercise in well exponents and logarithms log of 7 log of 7 this is 7 to the 7 fourths to the 1 half so this becomes 7 to the 7 eighths okay so this simply becomes log of 7 so this will become uh, 7 power 7 by 8 times log of 7 to the base 7 which is 1 log of 7 by 8 which simply becomes log of 7 minus log of 8 to the base 7 which becomes this is 1 minus this is 2 cubed so this is 3 log of 2 to the base 7 okay therefore the answer is C and let's check out what they have uh, for the problem here uh, yeah that's what they have okay and so that's for the first problem let's do another one um, this is a I like this problem in the sense okay let's do a symbolic one the set of all solutions of the equation log of x to the base 3 so let me write out the equation down here because it's a very elegant equation log of x to the base 3 log of x to the base 4 log of x to the base 5 is so the equation is equal log of x to the base 3 x to the base 4 it's a very beautiful cyclic equation log of x to the base 4 log of x to the base 5 plus log of x to the base 5 log of x to the base 3 is a this is 1 1 comma 60 C 1 5 10 60 D none of these okay so the solution we can straight away see that uh, notice uh, X equals 1 is a solution of the equation since we have 0 on both uh, the left hand side and the right hand side therefore it, the answer cannot be D none of these okay. and it looks like um, something's wrong with my tablet it's okay it's having a tendency to um, crash well, so far it hasn't but anyway x equals 1 is a solution of the equation now okay, so it did crash this is my journal error so let's try this again So if you call this 1, now x is not equal to 1 and 1 implies I can divide both sides by log of, by this product because you will see the motivation behind this is I will basically get 1 over log of x to the base 5 and I can use the change of base rule and get all of these to the base x. So this implies 1 is equal log of 5 to the base x uh, plus log of 3 to the base x plus log of 4 to the base x. But now I can see that this is simply 3 times 4 times 5 to the base x. This implies x equals 60. So the answer is therefore the answer is B but what is interesting and this is the answer because I know this because it's a very elegant problem I just checked it also as I was talking but anyway what is interesting let's 
60 is the least common multiple of 3, 4, and 5. So if we can ask ourselves, does this hold true in when you have n integers, n positive integers, of course? And I don't know the answer to that. But the point of me mentioning that we're looking at the least common multiple as the other solution is that um, when you look at a problem, any math problem, doesn't matter if it's an IET problem, you should go and think beyond what the problem is asking and see if you really understand the elegance behind the problem. Okay. Uh, like, can we do more with it? Now let's move on to an, another problem. Uh, log again. I cannot solve. I mean, I can solve every IIT question, mathematics mathematics question by looking at all the uh, exercises in different books. But a, I don't have time to do that. But b, it doesn't help if I practice, right? You have to practice. But not only practicing, like I said before. You have to be motivated. For example, look at it and say, oh, it's the LCM. It should be very um, it should please you that we get this result. It should be mindful of the math. So it, you have to do the work. I can just hopefully uh, give you motivation from my end, but you have to be motivated to actually practice and be mindful if you're working on the problem. So let's look at this. Uh, next problem. Uh, and then B is equal to A2, B8, C32, D64. Okay? And the solution is, well, log of uh, square root of 8, I mean, log of B to the base square root of 8 is 10 thirds implies that b equals square root of 8 power 10 thirds okay uh, this implies b equals 8 power 5 thirds correct so this implies that b equals the cube root of 8 to the fifth therefore b equals 32 so the answer is c let me check this that's a nice uh, numerical problem. Yep, C is the answer, right? Let's do another one, which is a symbolic problem. Okay, let me save this. That will be easier. Okay, so this is problem number four, of course. So A, B, C are consecutive. integers the log of 1 plus AC equals 2K and then the value of K is A log B B log A C and there it goes. It's crashing again. Hopefully my tablet's not approaching the end of its life. I've had it only for like two years. Actually, I think a year and a half. Well, C2, D1. And the solution is A, B, C are consecutive integers. So let's, I mean, understand the problem. In the sense, this implies that B is 8 plus 1 and C is 8 plus 2. Therefore, log of 1 plus AC equals 2K means log of 1 plus C is 8 plus 2. So it's A squared plus 2A is 2K. This implies log of A plus 1 the whole square is a squared plus b squared plus 2ab equals 2k. This implies, so now we can bring the 2 down here and cancel this 2. So k is log of a plus 1, which is b. 
So the answer is A. And if you look at it, yep, that's what it is. So here are some problems on logarithms. Okay, hopefully you'll be motivated to do more. I'll see you in the next lecture.